Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to continue our conversation from last week, where we're incorporating breathing into some fundamental Taiji movements and looking at it from the perspective of yin and yang, and as well as the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And just to refresh your memory, the uh, every time you inhale, you are stimulating the sympathetic nervous system. And that is the yang aspect. That is the act active part. It's the do part. And every time you exhale, you are sedating that and going into the parasympathetic, which is the, the uh, relax, they call it the digest and rest aspect of the autonomic nervous system. So these two are, are doing a little dance, the uh, parasympathetic and the sympathetic. That is, when the energy goes out, that's sympathetic. When the energy is coming in, that's parasympathetic. And you want to you wanna have a nice give and take there, a dynamic balance between those two. And um, whenever you... Uh, whenever it becomes imbalanced, either too much either side, then you're going to create some difficulties. If it's too parasympathetic, then you find yourself less able to, to be active, to do things. If it's too sympathetic, then you're going to be too hyper and you're not going to be able to restore so the energy, in the, re the restoration of your energy is, uh, is you get depleted and that has an effect over, over a long period of time where you start to, you feel the effect of what we call stress. That's where you go, 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 and then collapse and then go, 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 go. And so then that creates its own set of problems. So what we're trying to do in Taiji Chuan is get this dynamic balance. And that doesn't mean that it's always 50-50. Sometimes it's, 80-20, but always moving toward a kind of a seesaw effect where you're you're able to to restore as well as as create movement. So the it's a dance of do doing and being. I call it dooby dooby do. It's uh, you you get this 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 dance of doing and being and with your the yin aspect being the being state that is you're moving toward the wu way that is the 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 not do and then we have the way wu way which is the doing based in in non doing and so we have the the two of them are playing off of each other and that's where we get the taiji chuan that's where we get this interplay of polarities of the yang and the yin the expansion, the, the active versus the contraction and the inactive. And elements of each are present in, in each other. And that's where you get that, you know, the thing in the, the Taiji 2, which is, you know, the, the, the Taiji symbol we are so familiar with, where inside the yin is a piece of yang, inside the yang is a piece of yin. And so that sort of, it states that, that oh yeah, this is, the two are not only intertwined and interrelated, but they feed into each other, that they each carries a, uh, a component of the other. They're not, there's not a hard distinction between the two, but, based on your perspective, you can say something is more yin or more yang, depending on the circumstances that you're looking at. If I'm running in place, that's a more of a yang kind of motion compared to if I'm sitting in a chair. And so that, that's fine, but I can be yang if I'm sitting in a chair compared to lying on the floor. And so that's, that's the kind of idea there. So in, in every Taiji Shuan movement, there is a yin and yang, and depending on what it is we're trying to do with that. And being able to identify the yin and yang, not only of the movements it's themselves, but of each component part of a movement, uh, 
and recognize that there is a, a distinct function in every, every movement. And since there, there's a thousand different ways of doing even say something as simple as, as a, a ward off posture, you know, we're going to break it down. We can do something really simple, and we're going to focus not on the external movement that is what it looks like as much as the production of jin, that is your ability to direct energy via your conscious attention so as you can express it through the body. And see how that relates to not just the... Uh, uh, the yin and yang, but the breath and the things we can do to activate the jinn. And so there are certain things that we've discussed over the last couple of years that I'd like to kind of tie together some of them in by just doing a simple exploration of the, the four basic jinns of, of Taiji Tran, the, the four fundamental ones, which are Pong Lu Ji An, and um, so those are the the, the primary uh, gates of Taiji Tran, and then we'll um, we'll kind of break it down and 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 look at it. So to be give you a, a clue, what, what we're looking at here is that is the the whenever we're expanding doing any kind of thing, say a punch going out. The intention is to accompany that with an inhale. That is your inhaling. Now, I know, I know most Tai Chi Tran forms are taught the opposite. That is you exhale as you, as you extend. But I'm gonna take a clue here from, from William C.C. C. Chen. Um, his is, it, it makes a lot of sense to me because it's something that's easily tested. If you hold someone's arms out like that and you tell them to exhale and you push on their arms, they have no, there's no stuff there. Whereas if you have them inhale while they're holding their arms out, then they have a lot. So it's, the inhale is pumping up the system. It is more young. And so when you're going into a young expression of a movement, you would like to have the support of the breath in that. And so the way we're going to do it is with, with that idea. And even if you do it completely the opposite, whenever you're doing a, a, the form you know, that's fine with me. Uh, but for our purposes tonight, we're just going to explore this as a, uh, as a way of developing conscious awareness of where are we in terms of yin and yang with each phase of a particular movement. So the coordinating that with the qua. So that is whenever we're yin, the qua is getting sung. We're spiraling down. We're, we're releasing down into the qua and, uh, and establishing the substantiality of the weight-bearing leg by releasing hip tension and sinking into that, getting re releasing down into that. And then as we're expressing yang, then the qua turns, the, the waist turns, and you're expressing the energy at that point. And so that's more of a, a yang impulse at that when we do that. Also coordinating with that yin qua, reaching with the elbows. This is something we've covered before, and we'll probably need to cover again at some point. But the uh, the idea that if you extend and reach as if you're feeling with the elbows, if you're going uh, reaching outward with that, you're opening the shoulder joints and you're unkinking the hose in the shoulders when you do that. And it has a way of organizing and unifying the whole structure. So we're, as we release into the quad, we're also reaching with the, with the elbows. And, or, and, and, and opening the shoulder joints. And that creates, that creates a sense of wholeness, which is also that yin function. So we want to get that, get that going. So then, uh, and 
this is something that even though you do it, you reach with the elbows, it doesn't mean you don't do it again. You do it each time because it each time is a way of imprinting on your body mind that this is a good thing to do and it creates that that awareness so you're organizing the qua with the elbows with the breath and so we're going to do a little little exercise we're going to incorporate that with the uh, the four primary gates very simple expressions of those and kind of knock out most of the whistles and bells and we'll we'll look at at the, what the gin looks like as well so a lot of lot to cover here why don't you stand up and let's take a look at this First, we're going to establish our three pillars. So we get that energetic connection with the earth and the sky, feel the big chi moving through it. So we become opening the gates to the big chi. And so we start with the feet, feel the balls of the feet opening up the young tran points, the kidney one points in the, in the feet. And feel yourself sinking down into the earth. You're getting very soon. You're releasing downward, relaxing. Your muscles are getting soft. You're not pushing away from the earth so much as ah, just allowing the yin support of your legs to do their job without that need to push away. So feel the weight spreading throughout the whole foot, but organizing around the balls of the feet. Extend your awareness through the feet and into the earth. And simultaneously reach for the crown of your head without letting go of that sinking into the balls of your feet into your feet, sinking down into the earth. So we're having two opposing intentions here. One is to reach for the crown. So you're extending upward and opening to the yang chi of, of the heavens. Even as you're allowing the yin chi of the earth to rise up. So the yang chi is coming down and grounding out through your feet. The yin chi is rising up and extending up through the top of your head. Tuck in your chin and open the jade pillow gate. Uh, as I mentioned last week, this has the effect of, of activating, and not activating so much as uh, heightening the efficiency of the vagus nerve. Because when you open the jade pillow gate, you're, you're not kinking the hose at the, at the base of your skull, which has a tendency to, to impinge on the vagus nerve. And that feeds into your dantian. So the yin pole of the vagus nerve is down here in your dantian. The yang pole is up here at the, at the base of the skull. So we're, we're feeling into those two opposing poles there. The other thing that opening the jade pillow gate does is it allows for a smoother flow of cerebral spinal fluid by releasing the pressure on the, the dural tube. So you're opening that up and, 
and this allows for a smoother flow of that, of that and, and we'll get into that maybe next time and talk about the, the effect of the cerebral spinal fluid. But for right now, that just consider that as a, a positive thing. So relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. And this allows your pelvis to level out. It flattens out your back a little bit. Okay, remove some of the strain on your spine. Reach with your elbows. Your arms are slightly rounded. And op this opens the shoulder joint. That unkinks the hose at the shoulder joint. Point with your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. This signals the connective tissue system to return to a state of wholeness. It allows for a heightened functionality in your connective tissue system. And spiral down into your quad. So you're releasing downward, turning your body and just allowing your body to sink. So we have our three pillars now. We've unkinked the hose, we've created the energetic coherence, and we have central equilibrium. So just take a few breaths. And as you breathe, I'd like you to, to do a focused breathing. And as you inhale, inhale for a count of three, and then hold that for a count of three. Exhale for a count of three and hold that for a count of three. And this way you're, you're, you're consciously balancing out your autonomic nervous system. And do it however you count to three. We'll just do a few breaths like that just to familiarize and kind of reset the autonomic nervous system. So there's this dynamic balance between yin and yang, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Take particular attention to holding on the out breath as you exhale and hold. So feeling that state of not breathing and then continue. And what we're doing when we hold on that out breath is we are Emphasizing the parasympathetic, the yin aspect. And since for a lot of people, we run kind of a little more toward the sympathetic, a little more toward the yang. This acts as a, a way of balancing out. You may feel even some nervousness about not being able to to immediately gulp down another breath, but give yourself a moment and do that. The other thing to remember is don't exhale or inhale 100%, do it 70%. When you're exhaling, you're gradually letting go rather than blurting it out. And that calms down your nervous system as well. So here we're getting this a really nice reintroduction to the autonomic nervous system and the yin and the yang aspects of that. And now we're going to take this and um, put your right foot forward. Right foot? Yeah, right foot forward. And we're going to do a very simple Hong Lu Ji An, that is ward off, roll back, press and push. And um, so bring your hands up 
reach out with your right arm, your arms curved in front of your chest. Your palm is, so if you're saying your palm is like right dead center and your arm is relaxed, your elbows relax, your shoulders letting go. But you're, we're, what we're doing here with the palm gin is we're pointing and reaching with the index finger. And what that does is it creates this instant pong gin. That is your, your arm, the tensegrity of your connective tissue system allows your arm to become very uh, powerfully, flexibly, uh, 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 powerfully flexible. How about that? And then it uh, bring your left hand up. And so the palm faces the right hand. So we have the, the yang aspect of the right arm in this case, and the yin aspect of the left hand here. Reach out with both elbows. And so we're going to go from here into a roll back. So feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right and reach out with the hands. Feel that. So we're here, we're exhale and release the claw. So you're spiraling down to the right as you exhale and reach with the elbows. All these establish that yin quality. Even though the arms are reaching out, the body has become yin. And now feel the, the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and reach again with the elbows. Release, spiral down to the right in the qua. So you're, again, this is yin, which will be accompanied by exhale. And then turn. And here we're reaching out. And that would be a yang, an inhale. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and Exhale and spiral down to the left. So reaching out with the elbows, spiraling down into the claw. So you're feeling into the yin quality of, of that movement. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and you're spiraling down to the left and another exhale, you're releasing. And then inhale and turn. And here the hands meet, reach with the elbows, and feel that expansion. The energy is coming out in through both arms. It's, it's like a, both arms are yang here and we're sinking into the lower body as our yin here. And then we have, uh, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, reach to the elbows, sink into the claw and exhale, release down, feel into the ball of the right foot, push the right knee, push the right knee forward, set that, release down, you're continuing to exhale, and then inhale and reach out with the hands. And this is the push. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, I'm sorry, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. We're gonna go back to the roll back. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Reach with the elbows, exhale. So you're, this is yin, and then inhale, yang. So here we're reaching out with the hands and we're activating the yang aspect. And then exhale, Elbow, uh, reach with the elbows, set the knee, spiral down to the left. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, reach again, feel your elbows, exhale, and then inhale and press. Exhale, I'm sorry, we're gonna go back to rather press one to take that and we're gonna go to ward off that, let's take that. Let's do that again. So we're going from, from here, we're turning, reaching with the with the, the, the roll back, then left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, reach up, 
you're relaxing yin right ball set the right knee and then turn and we're going to go back to to pong again we're going to feel that inhale feel that expansion exhale turn exhale reach with the elbows sink inhale exhale spiral down to the left reach of the elbows sink right ball set the right knee sink again reach again with the elbows and then inhale press and that left ball set the left knee reach with the elbows sink in, into the quad exhale Feel that energy compressing down. Your hands are pressing down, compressing. Right ball, set the right knee. Release, quad, exhale. Reach of the elbows and then inhale, push. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. Open, left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the, to the right. Exhale, yin. Inhale, yang, turn. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, reach up, El reach with your elbows. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and then go back to ward off, press, or um, pong. Inhale. So now exhale. Exhale, inhale, reaching with the elbows. Exhale, exhale, feel the elbows, release the quad, and inhale, press. Exhale. Exhale, inhale, push. Exhale, exhale, inhale, roll back. Exhale, exhale, inhale. Ward off. Exhale. Exhale. Inhale. Roll back. Exhale. Exhale. Inhale. Press. Exhale, exhale, inhale, push. Your hands down, turn, step in. in, take a deep breath, and disappear the chi. Take a seat, please.
Lynn. That was really hard because I don't breathe as um, slowly as you do. <laughs> Especially when you were explaining. But then by the end, I started to get the, the hang of it. Yeah, uh, sorry about that, but there's a lot, a lot of talking that had to get put out there. So uh, sometimes you were you're <laughs> left in the. Uh, I still have uh, a couple of rats in there. <laughs> yeah, I kind of counted on, on you to, you guys to figure that out. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, hopefully, you know, as a as we went along, it got a little little smoother. Scott. Um, so you alluded to this, but I don't think you actually said it outright. Um, so when we're uh, exhaling, we should be reaching with our elbows. So when we're inhaling, should we be pointing? Uh, that that's that's a, that's a good thing. the The idea is you're you're establishing with the pointing establishes the tensegrity of the structure as well as the energetic coherence. So that's happening. Anytime you feel that you've slipped out of energetic coherence, you 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 do that. So it's it's yin or yang, you know. It it what it does is it establishes a state of wholeness. So at uh, um, so when in doubt, point. <laughs> I think is the is the way to do it. It's not locked into a specific a specific motion. It's just like. Anytime you think of it, just kind of feel feel the energetic coherence. And you get so that you get so attuned to the coherence after a while that you just need little a little reminder every now and then to uh, to to get you back on track. At first you do it a lot, you know, and then it gets easier and easier to a point where it's just like just a minor correction that occurs rather than, oh, I must do this. You know, another thing on the checklist. Well, when see what I normally do is when whether I yin, whether you, you know I'm inhaling exhaling. When I feel I need coherence, I reach with my elbows, and that gives me that creates coherence whether I'm inhaling or exhaling. So so or even when you're doing a yang move, I should, you can be re, you can be reaching with your elbows, right? Absolutely. Yeah, because that, that's what I that's what I've been doing. And and. I put it out there as, as a, one of the things you do in yin because it's like, okay, it, it, it's, it sets, you know, it creates a, a mindset so that you're, you're all ready to go. You're, you haven't stopped reaching with your elbows, but you know, it's, it's, it's there, you know, and, and so it, uh, I like it because like you say, it creates a, a heightened state of coherence. So, you know, we can we can point anytime. We can reach with our elbows anytime. The I find that a reaching with the elbows is a more refined skill than pointing with your index finger. You know, so it's something that you 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 learn. You know, you've been doing this for for quite a while now, so it's it becomes it's easier. But for a lot of people, they they. The concept of reaching with their elbows is completely foreign to them. So that that's interesting, that, that, interesting uh, enough. It's I actually find it's the opposite. For me, it's actually easier to reach with my elbows than to point when I'm terrific. Terrific. Fine. Rick's yeah. dying. Rick. Yeah. Uh, I started to get a hang of it near the end too, and it was very nice, except at that moment my upper left arm really started to ache, which is very unusual. I haven't experienced that before. Ache, okay. Um, yeah. uh, I would say, shake it out and then do it again and see if it's still there. You know, so anytime you get a, an ache like that, it's sort of it's like, oh, I'm holding something at a pre-conscious level that I want to take a look at. And so you, you look and you shake it out and then you go back and see if it comes back. And then you know, if it does, then you say, ah, what did I, what am I doing now? And then you can kind of, you do that, you know, that in, internal examination and then it'll, it'll, you'll get some clues that way, which is, which is great because 
we're always finding new stuff. You know, I don't care how experienced you are at this. You're always finding new, every time you, every time you do this, it's, it's new stuff. You've never, you've never had this particular body before, you know, it's, <laughs> you're discarding millions of cells every second. So you're, you know, get used to the new one because <laughs> it's not the, I, I ain't the same as I was a minute ago. So, uh, and that way it's a constant uh, opportunity to discover. Gotcha, thank you. Right. Cool. Anybody else? Um, so just to, um, I guess to clarify here, the, you know, we're, we're inhaling to expand and really getting the feeling of that so that it becomes, your, your body mind starts to integrate that with the, uh, um, with, most, with your motion. So you're, it, it no longer like, oh, I got to do this now and I got to do that now. It becomes like, well, yeah. So even if just like right now, we just sitting here, we say, okay, as I'm inhaling, I'm going to reach out with my arms. So just reach out with your arms, reach out with your wrists, feel your elbows, inhale, and then exhale, ah, bring the hands, bring, uh, reach down with the elbows, bring the hands in. Now, inhale, expand. Exhale, reach with the elbows. So we're feeling this pulsing. Inhale, feel that yang expansion. And yin contraction. consolidation and extension. Inhale and exhale. So this is something you can do anytime you want during the day. It's like, just get it so that you're getting that awareness it becomes part of, of what you do, but it's not, it's not dogmatic. It's not something you have to do it this way. In fact, you can do the exact opposite. Once you get the hang of it, once you start to really get the feel of the yin and yang aspects of it, then you can reverse it and say, I'm going to exhale as I reach out and inhale as I'm coming in and making this be the ex the reaching out be the yin. Even though the motion is yang, my energy is yin. And then that inhale or exhale rather, or I'm sorry, the inhale of compressing down into you know, with the inward motion and Yin on the out breath and yang on the in breath. So the, you can play with it. So this is where we start to disambiguate between the uh, the breath and the yin and the yang. We use it as a training tool. And there is a correlation, as I mentioned before, between a full exhale where you're trying to be young and you're going to get uh, you're going to get a a collapse of the structure and if whereas if you inhale you're going to get a, a support of the structure but you don't get too locked into that as a mindset to the point where you you just breathe and 
you're separating the yin and the yang, the energy aspect from the breathing aspect. We use the breathing to train it until we no longer need it. And then we just, we just breathe and, and the, we're able to summon the yin and the yang independent of whether we're inhaling or exhaling. Does that make sense? Cool, great. Um, cool, anybody else? Let's see, yeah. all right, um, let's see. The, um, the purpose of each, each move then, we get that, that jin. So we're training jins with these moves. That is your ability to summon the energy and express it through the body mind in a way that is effective, it's clean, it's, it, uh, and it's instantaneous doesn't require a lot of ramp up in order to be able to to say to, to award off you want to be able to summon the pungjin and once you can do that then we can disregard the the form and it just becomes the energy so you know i think uh, i mentioned in in um in western gate you know and we're talking about uh, my encounter with Wei Sin Liao. And he, he asked if I wanted to, to feel his Pong Jin. I said, I expected, you know, a ward off. And uh, he just put his fingers lightly on my chest and sent me, without pushing, just sent me crashing into the wall behind me. And like, uh, it, was, it was rather bizarre. And it sticks with me to this day. The fact that he had such command of his Pong that it didn't require a lot of any of that physical force to make it to make it work it just it just it just shot through me and kind of moving in that direction where we are able to to differentiate between the pong and the motion between the the energy and the and the and and the motion but we get there by training, training it big, training it big until we don't have to anymore, till we can go smaller and smaller and smaller. But that only comes when you have the confidence, you've gotten enough feedback from your training partners, from your teacher, from whatever, that say, yeah, yeah, you got that. That's, that's, you're, 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 you're demonstrating your pong at that point, at which point you can start to let go of some of the muscular support that goes into it. And that's true of all the different, um, all the different chins, you know, your, your rollback, you know, it becomes less a thing of, of, of a big sweeping motion and more just a feeling that energy going down and in and where you can just, with just a, a movement of your hand, you can create that effect on someone because you have such familiarity with your with your jin. But you get there by training big, by first coordinating the breath with the yin and the yang, mostly as a training tool, so that I know if I'm breathing, if I'm inhaling, that. I'm in a yang movement and I've identified something as a yang movement and it's doing the work of expanding or whatever. And it's, it's, there's a, an energy going out and with it comes various physiological effects. If I know if I'm exhaling, I'm moving more toward the parasympathetic, I'm moving more toward the hmm, returning to wholeness, returning to a uh, a state of unity, oneness, and then inhale and expand beyond the oneness into to what else is possible. So there's that that constant dance that's going on there. But it comes the practice is ongoing, and it's not something you just do, you know, fifteen minutes a day or something like that. It's like all day. 
you are noticing in your movements, you're noticing in your non-movements what's going on. And all this is being processed at a either a conscious level or at a super conscious level where you're not having to you're not having to articulate it all the time but your capacity to articulate it your capacity to to break down the oneness into the manyness and say that part and that part and that part and these fit together this way and that way and they collide here and they separate there and things like that and you get to uh, you get to play then they say oh time to go back to oneness again Whoop. and you're back there and that is the pulse of existence and once you get in in tune with that then you start tapping into you know what i consider to be the spiritual aspect the spiritual path of of uh taiji chuan that is where you are embodying this this process you're embodying Tao at that point it's not something you're thinking about but you get there you get there by thinking because that's what we humans do we like to think and we tell these we like to tell stories we like to say hey this and that and this is not that and it's kind of like that but also like this other thing over there and and we like to do that and then we then we go back and say oh back to here and that's like ding and it's rinse and repeat uh the game goes on cool um anything else before we go folks okay thank you all so much it's been fun yeah thank you Maria. Thank you, Maria. Bye -bye.